We do a recurring segment on this show um, whenever we feel like it, because we're just that disciplined. Um, it's a segment called Debunction Junction. And the reason we really like Debunction Junction is twofold. Number one, uh, we have a really cute cartoon train. And I really dig it when we get to run the hoo -hoo cartoon train. Yeah, sorry. Also, um, it gives us a chance to debunk stuff. There are claims that arise on the news sometimes that are widely believed to be true, but can demonstrably be shown to be false. Also, there are some things in the news that seem too outlandish to really seem actually true, but they are confirmable. So we use that segment to confirm as true or debunk as untrue stuff that you might have heard about in the news. We don't do it all the time, but when we do it, I think there is a public interest value to it. So I'm glad that we do it. We also make a regular practice on this show of running corrections. If we say something on the air, if I say something on the air that turns out not to have been true, either an inadvertent mistake or an editing error or just wrong information or a false interpretation, we correct it. Not everybody in TV news makes a practice of doing that, but for us, we have always felt like it's a responsible and useful thing to do. One of the byproducts of that, however, which I think is sort of fascinating, is that a lot of times when we say something critical about somebody or some group, they write to us immediately and tell us that we've got our facts wrong. And because I think we have a policy of running corrections, we always take those missives very seriously. We always quadruple check whatever it is they're upset about just to make sure that we got it right. And in most cases, these folks turn out to just not like what it is we've said about them, but we haven't actually made an error. For example, Kansans for Life. Kansans for Life is an aggressive anti-abortion group with an innocuous sounding name. They told us today that they were upset that last night we quoted from a death threat letter sent by somebody who has worked with them. The death threat in question was addressed to Dr. Myla Means, the doctor in Kansas who's been threatened and harassed by the anti-abortion movement for saying she wants to perform abortions in Wichita since nobody else has been doing that since the murder of Dr. George Tiller. A representative of Kansans for Life called our office today and was very, 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 very angry with us at length. Uh, because we reported that the author of that death threat, a person named Angel, Dil Angel Dillard, excuse me, uh, is somebody who has worked with Kansans for Life in the past. Again, here's the death threat. Here's the envelope that it came in. Here's the name of that person on both the return address and at the bottom of the letter. The representative of Kansans for Life who called us today was unhappy with the way we associated Angel Dillard with their group. So has Angel Dillard worked with Kansans for Life? Well, here's Ms. Dillard being interviewed for the film, What's the Matter with Kansas? Here she is in that film at the Kansans for Life booth at the Kansas State Fair, volunteering for Kansans for Life. I understand that Kansans for Life, you guys are very upset that we put this information on the air, that the author of this death threat is linked to your group. I understand you feel like that makes you look bad. I think it does make you look bad, but it doesn't mean that we got it wrong. One of our producers spoke with that representative from Kansans for Life again tonight for more than a half an hour. She was very nice, but she was unable to refute any of our reporting. We did not get it wrong. Similarly, we got a not angry at all, but actually very friendly and charming and good-natured long letter uh, from the spokesman for House Speaker John Boehner recently. He was unhappy with our characterization of Speaker Boehner as um, bad at his job and also as having what I think we described as the opposite of a Midas touch. Mr. Boehner's spokesman, again, was really nice about it. He approached it in a very constructive way, but he wanted us to stop saying that the Republicans fell way short of their promise to cut $100 billion out of the budget this year. He wants us to stop saying that. The problem is they did fall short of that promise. House Republicans proposed $61 billion worth of cuts. $61 billion is not $100 billion, which is what they promised. $61 billion is only $100 billion if you are rounding up to the nearest $100 billion. I know he doesn't want us to say that John Boehner blew that giantly hyped campaign promise, but in fact, John Boehner did blew that giantly did blow that giantly hyped campaign promise. It is only in the world of super tortured pretzel logic annualizing when we didn't say we'd be annualizing math that you can say he didn't blow that promise. He blew it. So again, you not liking the way it sounds is not the same thing as us making an error. It's not the same thing as it not being true. The process about fighting about this stuff sometimes, though, can be fun, and it can even sometimes advance the story. Mr. Boehner's spokesman, for instance, also told us he didn't like us saying that House Republicans kept breaking their own rule that they would always cite the exact constitutional authority for every bill they introduced. They did, in fact, set that as a new rule, but their attempt to abide by it has run into some serious trouble. I mean, there is, it, 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 I'm, I'm happy to admit, there is some ambiguity about when exactly a bill is considered to be introduced and when it should have that citation and that citation coming retroactively after most people think it's already been introduced. You can fight about that. 
But in the process of telling us how much they didn't want us to say anything about this constitutional citation promise, it became clear to us in a way it never had been before that when Republicans say they're going to cite the Constitution, cite constitutional authority for what they're doing, they don't apparently mean they are citing something in the Constitution that gives them the authority to pass that bill. What they apparently meant by a constitutional citation is that they'll just say stuff like, well, we have authority to do this because we think health reform is unconstitutional. What you're looking at right now is a constitutional citation offered recently by Republican Congressman Joe Pitts. As you can see, it does not cite the Constitution. So if that's what they meant when they pledged a statement of constitutional authority for every bill, it is good to have that clarified now. When they say they're going to cite the Constitution, sometimes that just means they're going to say a variant of the word Constitution, but no quotes from the actual Constitution will be there. This is much clearer now. We learned something. We learned something about another way in which I think John Boehner is not very good at his job. I'm not trying to be deliberately combative about this. I do appreciate Mr. Boehner's spokesman reaching out to us. I hope we can continue a constructive dialogue. Uh, for instance, I would love to interview Speaker Boehner at some point. I am happy to talk about this stuff, and we will correct it when we get it wrong. But we will also correct you if you say publicly that we are wrong when we are really not. There are too many people who work too hard on this show for us to get slandered when we are, in fact, telling the truth. Usually somebody saying something untrue about MSNBC or about uh, this show, usually, honestly, it doesn't rise above the level of somebody being wrong on the Internet. Uh, but sometimes it's real newspapers doing what looks like real fact checking, and they really get it wrong. The right wing this week, for example, got very excited when a St. Petersburg Times project called PolitiFact called a piece of our reporting on the Wisconsin crisis false. It was specifically about Wisconsin's budget. They said, quote, Maddow and the others are wrong. There is indeed a projected deficit in Wisconsin. Flashing red lights, bells and whistles, meter to red, Maddow lied. She said there's no budget shortfall in the state of Wisconsin. Roll the tape. There is, in fact, a $137 million budget shortfall. PolitiFact ran a whole article about me supposedly denying the existence of a budget shortfall in Wisconsin. They say, quote, here's the bottom line. There should be no debate on whether or not there is a shortfall. We rate Maddow's take false. Tape. There is, in fact, a $137 million budget shortfall. PolitiFact says I am false, false, because I denied there is a budget shortfall in Wisconsin. There is, in fact, a $137 million budget shortfall. If you are somebody who does not bite your nails, but you would like to start, if you feel like reading the letters we sent to PolitiFact, asking them to please run a correction on this, we have posted those letters on our blog. So you too can share in our frustration. They have told us they do not intend to run a correction about their mistakes on this, which I should not find astonishing, but I do. PolitiFact, you are wrong here on the facts and bluntly, and you ought to correct it. Putting the word fact in your name does not grant you automatic mastery of the facts. When Karl Rove wrote in the Wall Street Journal that Barack Obama had, quote, the worst ratings of any president at the end of his first year, PolitiFact rated that mostly true, even though the approval rating Mr. Rove cited was 49 percent, and Ronald Reagan posted a 48 percent approval rating at the end of his first year. Did not matter to PolitiFact, apparently. They rated that the statement from Mr. Rove as mostly true. What? Yeah, because apparently the word true means a lot less than you think it means. PolitiFact also said that Democratic Congresswoman Nita Lowy's explanation of the Stupak Amendment, the abortion amendment to health reform, they called that a false analysis. When PolitiFact was challenged on that claim by the website Fire Dog Lake, PolitiFact reportedly conceded to Fire Dog Lake that what Congresswoman Lowy had said about the bill, her analysis of the bill, they conceded that, okay, what she said could be true in some cases. They just didn't find it to be a likely predictor of what was going to happen in the future. So even though they apparently conceded it could be true, they decided to not run a correction and stick with their ruling that it was false. It could be true, but we're going to call it false. Because what is true, really? We have fact in our name. Right now on the internet, there are people who are upset with a host at the Fox News Channel whose name is Shepard Smith. 
They're upset because Mr. Smith uh, cited the same data that I cited recently about big money outside contributors in the last election cycle. According to OpenSecrets.org, which everybody cites, which tracks federal election filings and which nobody is impugning, here are those contributors. We know we've been talking about this for the last few days. Of the top 10, seven of the top 10 from the last election, seven of the top 10 are contributing to the right. Only three of them are contributing to the left. And the only three that are contributing to the left are unions. This, I believe, is a key piece of analysis for understanding why the Republicans are going after unions. If you can dismantle unions, if you can weaken unions, and the sector in the economy where unions are strongest is the public sector, if you can weaken unions, that has clear partisan implications. There are only three out of the top ten contributors of big money and outside of outside groups in the last election who are not contributing to right-wing causes, and they are the unions. But the right wing is on fire right now about Shep Smith citing that same information that I cited because I also cited it. And therefore, it must be false. Um, because this particular burst of anger is a pure right wing Internet phenomenon, if you have seen anything about this, you have probably seen it retweeted some point as Rachel Maddow is wrong and she looks like a man. Also uh, favorite Rachel Maddow is wrong and also gay. Um, you know, just because you don't like the way it sounds when I say it, or you don't like my haircut, or you don't like that I'm gay, it does not mean that what we say is not true. Those are the real numbers from OpenSecrets.org. Those are the real big money outside contributors from the last election cycle. It was true when Open Secret said it. It was true when I said it. It is true when Mr. Smith over at the Fox News Channel said it. And if you squint a little bit, it is true. I do sometimes look like a dude, and I am definitely gay. Um, and calling bullpucky is, is fun. Calling bullpucky is journalistically useful. It is a neat idea to be able to call balls and strikes in politics and in news. To fact check things you hear in the news and to fact check things you hear politicians and political figures say. People do get stuff wrong and it should be pointed out. When I confused uh, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution in terms of which one had a preamble, you may recall that I not only apologized for that, I sung and danced my apology to that. When you get something wrong, it is both good practice and I find satisfying to own up to it. Say you got it wrong learn something about it and move on but that should apply to everybody that should apply to everybody even if you have the word fact in your name or in what you say you are doing calling somebody a liar when they are not lying is not the same as fact-checking that is just bullpucky too thanks very much for being with us tonight